What's a small act of kindness you were once shown, that you'll never forget? Neighbors asked to borrow my truck. Told them I could not trust my truck because the tires were bad. Next day Mr. Neighbor called and said he was getting new tires for his Suburban and I could have his old ones. Told me to just show up at this certain tire shop and they would put them on. Get to tire shop and they put on brand new Goodyear tires. I asked what happened to the old tires I was supposed to receive. Shop owner said the old tires was just a story to get me in the shop. Mr. Neighbor bought me a full set of new tires instead of the old tires he said I could have. I guess they can borrow the truck anytime after that. D. Riding my bike on a long trip through Canada, with about 50 miles to go, I had a major mechanical failure. Stuck on the side of the road in a foreign country within 5 minutes at least 10 cars had stopped to check on me. One guy loaded my bike in the back of his truck and drove me 30 miles to the border where I could catch a ferry back to the US. Amazing kindness and generosity toward a stranger. He just asked that I pay it forward and to date I've helped 5 cyclists who were broken down in honor of that promise. Canadians are so nice, they don't want anything in return, just pay it forward. I was 9 years old, waiting for the school bus in Wisconsin winter. I had a thin coat, no hat or gloves. A woman driving past saw me and stopped, giving me a blanket from the back of her car. It was a long skinny one, so she wrapped it around my head and shoulders like a big scarf. I remember thanking her, but being confused. I told her I didn't know how I would give it back when I was done borrowing it. She hugged me and said not to worry, I still have that blanket. I love that you still have the blanket. Alternator died while I was driving home from university. Engine died as I exited the freeway in the middle of the night in a not so pleasant part of town in the days before cell phones. As I'm pushing my car out of the intersection, a guy in a truck comes up and offers to push my car to my neighborhood a good 3 miles away. He does so, and I'm pulling into my neighborhood. He simply gives a wave and drives off into the night. I never even had a chance to thank him. Ones like this always get me a little more. Where the person is very obviously just doing it to be a good person. So much so they don't even let you say thanks. When I was young, 19, I lost my wallet and someone used my license to rack up tickets. It was pretty obvious once courts looked at the location of the tickets and what vehicle was used, the signature, that it wasn't me. I had to go to around 3 courts clearing it up. The third judge was the only one with a problem. He said I had failures to appear since the tickets were ignored. I explained what was happening and how I've been dealing with this and I came in as soon as I was made aware of the issue. He wanted to put me in jail because he didn't trust I'd be back. He wouldn't look at my paperwork because it was an arraignment. He would only look at it during the trial date. I didn't know what to do, but I had the name of the public defender memorized. I asked if I could talk with her first. He called her in and said, this young man seems to know you. I quickly explained what was happening and showed her my evidence. She told the judge that if he didn't release me to come back, she'd pay my bail out of her own pocket. He scorned me but released me. I just had to return the next month during the trial date. I was 19 then, 39 now. Let there blossom on planet earth a thousand public defenders with hearts of gold like this one. Great story. Thanks for sharing. I took my sister who's in a wheelchair to the cinema for the first time on my own. At the end, I realized I could undo the brakes and was blocking everyone. I felt like crying because I thought everyone was pee at me, but some nice lady helped me, then took me and my sister out. She said she once had a son who needed a wheelchair. This was long ago but I'll never forget. Once had a son, ouch. I was out of a job at a time that I had to support my mother. Finally landed one but I had to walk back and forth and I didn't have any shoes that would hold up on the walk or the work. Went to FB and mom asked around for some hand-me-downs we could buy from someone. A day later a very kind man showed up with a brand new pair of really nice shoes he had just gone out and bought for me. He left before I could even get any money for him. I cried. I recorded a homemade album with my garage band in high school and handed out a few CDs. A few weeks later my English teacher approached me with 5 pages of notes on what he liked and what I could improve on. He apparently got the CD from someone at the high school and listened to it all the way through. It was over an hour long. He didn't know I was the singer and guitar player until he asked the person who gave him the CD. 
He said that if I ever got a shot in a studio, I would create something amazing. Thank you to all the teachers out there who believe in their students. It makes all the difference to some of us. During the single most difficult time of my life, a stranger on Reddit gifted me $500. To me, it was a fortune. I received it while at work and just broke down. It started the change of my life and a few months later I was able to move. Met my now fiancé, had my son, and found my job. I still message them once in a while to update them on my life and continue to thank them for their generosity. But I think they abandoned their account years ago. Well dang. Paging you that redditor. At work I was complaining about heartburn once. I was still pretty new to the job. Didn't really have any work friends. Felt like an outsider. My life outside of work was pretty crap as well. The bartender on shift overheard me and ran to a nearby coffee shop to get me a chocolate milk. It definitely made the heartburn go away but it was such a needlessly kind act. I don't think you'll ever forget it. Two years later we're still friends and she is definitely one of the kindest people I've ever met. Whoa, the last part made me smile. That's so lovely to hear. Some people are just so lovely aren't they? I literally coasted into a gas station out of gas on my motorcycle, then realized I didn't have my wallet. Some lady saw me patting all my pockets and that I was upset and offered to fill up my tank. I only let her put $5 in, which on a bike is a lot, but it meant so much to me. So, there was this one time in the 1990s, I was helping my brother move from a teaching job after college. This was in the middle of nowhere in the upper peninsula of Michigan. He was driving his little pickup truck pulling a trailer and I was driving my crappy little Ford station wagon, packed to the gills with his stuff. It was a Sunday, I'm driving along and my car just dies. No warning, nothing. I coast to a stop on the side of a rural highway and wait for my brother to realize I wasn't behind him anymore and turn around. After about 20 minutes, he finds me, the hood up and neither one of us knows very much about cars. Soon, though a man from the house we broke down in front of comes out, takes one look at the engine and says, timing belt. We inquire about getting the car towed the 30 miles to the closest large town and realize that it was going to be an expensive repair, even if the engine was okay and not ruined. This man, though, he takes one look at the situation, sees two broke kids in their early 20s just trying to get by in life and he says, well, it's Sunday, nothing's gonna be open. I tell you what, my next door neighbor is a mechanic. Let's push the car down to my driveway and we'll see what we can do. So that is exactly what we do. His neighbor calls his buddy at the auto parts store, which is closed on a Sunday, who does a favor and gets the parts needed, drives them 30 miles out to the house and well sit around telling stories while the car gets fixed. This man's son, a kid of about 9 or 10, is hanging around. He is extremely bored. There were no kids nearby his age, and he's craving any kind of interaction. Even with two guys in their 20s, the kid goes one to see my treehouse and points to the woods out back. My brother and I look at each other, shrug, and say, sure. We end up spending two hours with this kid, helping him build his treehouse. When we are done, we go back to the house and the car is all fixed. My brother and I have maybe $60 in cash on us, combined, and try to pay the man who did the work but he refused. He said, no. You boys were in need of help and I wanted to help. You don't need to pay me. Plus, you kept my son occupied for several hours, which I truly appreciate. He then says, I want you to do something for me. Though, the next time you see someone in need of help and you have the means, I want you to repay this favor. And that is one of the rules of life I live by, taught to me by a generous man in the middle of nowhere who helped me out when I was in a time of need. I'm so glad you got that beautiful rule from this stranger. Keep it up homie. One in middle school, my softball team lost a match. A girl from the other team walked over to me and handed me a blue pouch. At first, I couldn't open it, so I said, thank you and walked with my parents to my car. After examining it for a while, I was able to open it and pull out this really cute softball necklace. I still have it to this day. Too I had to get a spinal fusion surgery for my scoliosis. During my week long recovery one of the nurses asked me what my favorite candy was out of the blue. I told her, chocolate. During her next shift, 
She walked in with a huge tin full of chocolate and a cute stuffed sloth. I still have the sloth. She also put up balloons and a happy birthday sign for my sister who was visiting me. 3. Another nurse cried when I left and hugged me. I was literally astounded by their kindness towards me. I felt really bad that they had to take care of me all the time during my stay. But they really made me feel welcome. Also, my surgery was successful and I'm basically pain free. I was bullied a lot as a kid. There were three boys in the neighborhood who were always really mean to me. Well there was a new kid who had just moved in. Like half the size of the neighbor boys. And he already had a target on his back because he was very flamboyant. Well one day the boys were picking on me. And this kid. It was the first time anyone ever stood up for me and man he got pee. He got his butt kicked. I felt terrible. But he was super happy about it afterwards. I wish I remembered his last name. I hope he has an amazing life. I have two moments that I'll never forget. When I was younger, my mum was depressed and we had very little money. It was either heating or eating a lot. An old lady around the corner from us would invite us over for tea sometimes or breakfast before school. She knitted me, my baby sister and my mum cardigans, socks and a blanket each one winter when it was really bad. I was at a terrible time of my life at 17, had a bad day at work, and then my train home was one hour plus late. I just started crying at the train station and was really wondering if it was all worth it. A woman just held me for a bit while I cried. She was a complete stranger. I've never seen her since but I needed her I guess. I think she saved my life that day. Hope you and your mom are all doing much better these days. Choking to death on a roadside and a nice guy stopped and did the hemlich on me. Thanks bro. Holy crap. Choking is one of my worst fears. You were so lucky that guy knew what to do. I was around 6 years old and went out to ride my bike. My parents were behind me walking and I was going ahead and coming back to them every 5-10 minutes but I forgot to turn around and realized I am lost so I started crying after some unsuccessful attempts to find them. One kind man probably in his 60s stopped and asked me multiple question about what happened and who were my parents. It turned out that he knew my grandpa. He contacted him, got my parents numbers and called them. They decided where to meet and after 20 minutes we were there. I was so happy and relived and thanked the old man. He lives in the block of flats as my grandpa and I sometimes help him by carrying the groceries or fixing something in his house. I would never forget this act, because things could have gone wrong for me. Now you have a friend for years and memories for a lifetime. As a boy, I developed rheumatic fever and had to stay home for months to work through it and recover. When the lady next door found out how sick I was, she made a big pot of homemade chicken soup. It was delicious and full of healthy, fresh ingredients. To this day, mom believes that it was this woman's kindness and love she put into her soup making that helped me recover faster. This is so heartwarming. That's such a nice thing to do. I was at a concert and a couple behind me gave me a VIP pass to get a picture with the artist because their friend couldn't come. Never will forget it. Whoa. Talk about generosity dang that's generous. When I was 10 plus played little league. When the team won a game. Everyone would go to the dairy barn for an ice cream cone to celebrate. Had a Nazi coach one year who determined that if you didn't play in the game, you didn't get an ice cream. I didn't play one game that we won. I wasn't very good anyway, but still I went to the dairy barn just to hang with my friends. Others usually went home. The lady server asked me what I wanted and I told her that I couldn't have won because I didn't play in the game. She gave me a funny look. And went on to the next customer. Later as we were sitting at the outdoor picnic tables. This same lady came out and gave me a huge ice cream cone. You're still a winner. She said and walked away. I still choke up a little when I think about it. Frick that piece of crap coach. I've posted this before but I had finally decided to get out of my abusive home. I went to my college's financial aid office to see if I could qualify for a dorm. I was $50 short. I remember looking at the ground trying not to cry. I had finally gotten the courage up to leave and I still couldn't do it. The financial aid lady touched my shoulder looked me in the eyes and said I believe you it was the first time anyone had flat out said they believed I was being abused. She took out her own credit card and paid the last $50. She went with me to sign the lease and to get the key to my dorm. 
I stood with the key in my hand and realized I was getting out. I was going to be free. I broke down she hugged me and told me to pay it forward eventually. I have no idea what her name is but to the woman at Dixie College who took a chance on me thank you. I pay it forward by speaking at therapy groups about how to choose not to be a victim and by sponsoring those who are in similar living situations as I was. I fainted walking up steps on my way to calculus at university. A stranger caught me and put me down on the landing. If it wasn't for him I would have gotten very hurt. I'm a fairly short woman and I've caught both the people who fainted around me. It blew my mind that I was able to respond quickly enough. In both cases it could have been real ugly if I didn't catch them. Glad you had your own ninja. When I was at school, I helped a girl out when she was having a meltdown in the bathroom. A few weeks later she pretended to be my friend who had been waiting to meet me, when I was being followed home by two guys. We never saw each other outside of those two occasions but I still think about her and hope she's doing okay somewhere out there. Bonds made in the women's bathroom are unbreakable. I broke my foot and was trying to limp my way across campus with crutches in the pouring rain. Someone ran over with their umbrella and walked across campus with me so I wouldn't get rained on. This reminds me of a time in third grade, where I had a really messed up leg after an injury resulting in internal bleeding, caused by my hemophilia. I was limping across the school grounds, when a much older student helped me by picking me up, and carrying me all the way to the other side. I was trying to fly internationally for the first time to visit a friend in the UK in spring 2010. You know, that year that the volcano erupted and you couldn't fly into or out of Europe for quite some time, I rode up to Chicago on the train not knowing if I was going to have a flight or not. It was just all kinds of extra stress on top of the stress of trying to travel internationally for the first time. Ultimately I didn't get to go. Flight got cancelled shortly before boarding. The airline gave me my money back and I just hopped the train back home. But the flight was still scheduled when I got to O'Hare so I checked in and went to sit at the gate. Couldn't eat. Trying to read with a tear stained face that most people were ignoring. This older couple came and sat right next to me at a time when the waiting area was pretty much empty and simply began a conversation. Husband and wife trying to get home to Amsterdam. Had been stranded in the US for days, but came and talked to me. Didn't acknowledge the state my face was in, but they knew anyway. They didn't have to, and it was some very small kindness after a really rough day. I'll remember those folks and their kind. Distracting conversation for a long time. Not many folk kinder than the Dutch. So once in high school, I ate at a Mexican restaurant and unknowingly threw away my car keys on my tray when I was done eating. I went and asked a worker if he had cleared them off the table and he said no, but that he had just taken the trash out to the dumpster. I remember going outside and calling my dad to ask if there was a spare and he told me no. So I went back inside feeling humiliated and about to ask if I could look through the dumpster only to see that this man had already dug through the dumpster on my behalf and ended up finding my keys for me. He just went above and beyond and to this day I am so grateful for his help. The time my car broke down in the middle of the night and my phone died and I didn't know what to do. A random stranger pulled over and told me we all need a little help sometimes and I'll never forget her words as she helped me jumpstart my car. I transferred in the middle of first grade to a school that did ice cream Fridays where you'd pay like 50 or 75 cents for whatever kind and then you'd watch an educational video in the classroom. I was unaware of this when the first Friday rolled around so I didn't have any change and neither did the kid next to me. Normally there would be a few who didn't get ice cream but this day we were the only two. So the teacher called the both of us aside and gave us each the change required to have our ice cream. I think the biggest thing was that she didn't do it in front of the other kids so it looked like we had brought the money all along. It was incredibly kind of her. She was a wonderful teacher outside of that as well. TLDR. I and another student didn't have money for ice cream the day everyone else did. The teacher bought us ice cream so we wouldn't be left out. Now that's going above and beyond the call of duty. It was very awesome of her. I was around 19 years old in my first year of community college. My dad has lost his job and my mom was supported my entire family. We were struggling for a while. I remember being in my night class one day starving. I figured there'd be no dinner so I told myself I'll go straight to bed when I get home and not think about being hungry. When I got home after class, 
There was a giant box of Costco pizza on the kitchen counter. Apparently one of our neighbors had bought it for us because my dad fixed a part of her fence a few months back. I think it stuck with me because A. I was so freaking hungry and B. The chances of her bringing food that night of all nights was insane to me. It might sound so stupid but I'll never forget it. I bet that pizza tasted so good too. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.